Hey, what's up guys? So this is going to be a bit of an overview with Acute Health. I established an account with them after researching a couple of other places like Atlas MD and Chiron Health and a few other ones that I've been kind of experiment, experimenting with Athena. Um, and it's not so much the price tag, like I said, $300 is kind of the going rate for uh, $300 a month per pretty much per practitioner some places will just charge you an extra fifty dollars once the account is set up per extra practitioner but i think uh, it, the, the price obviously makes sense you hopefully are making enough from your telemedicine practice that it's sustainable so this is acute health kind of the you know your traditional uh, startup uh, feel you know y combinator and like startup health and um they're look like they have some sort of a trusted by DPC Alliance and DPC Frontier. Those of you who are in the direct primary care scene kind of know about these uh, quite a bit. So just kind of a quick overview. They obviously uh, provide e-prescribing and they have controlled substances capabilities. They have a HIPAA compliant video visit platform, um, data security, uh, I don't know what this is, what tools to help you build your team, uh, self-scheduling. Yep. So we're kind of going to go over, I'll, I'll go over all of the features everything that you pretty much need to know if you know how does this going to work for your patients and i gotta say that they're actually really good with their support so if you reach out to them you have a question um i've been communicating with somebody nate uh, has been really friendly very quick to get back to me and send me some resources the other place i want to send you guys to is help.acutehealth.com here you'll get some how-to videos which are kind of good to watch just like anything, you always think you know it until you sort of watch a video and then you're like, oh, yeah, this is, this is important. I need to know that um, kind of everything from how to schedule a patient, how to edit calendar, uh, your calendars, how to integrate with uh, Google Calendar. What, what does it look like when a patient goes to schedule themselves? And of course, you know, I'll go I'll go over all of that. But um, yeah, so basically when you go to acute health up here, you're going to go to login and it's going to take you pretty much to your calendar page. Um, your basic setup. Um, so this is your calendar. You, know, you can see here that I can take a look uh, at the work week. I can look at the day. Um, I can see my own Google Calendar integrated here. Um, I can see my availability. So these are the times that I'm available for patients to book. I've put about 5 a.m. to 10 a.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time, just kind of the times that I would want to do some telemedicine work. And after that, for my own practice, I don't want to see any more patients. Uh, the rest of the time, I might be communicating with them asynchronously. So the calendar feature, the calendar feature is really nice, pretty easy. Um, you can put some blocks of time here where you can edit your, your details. I think that's pretty cool and that's not easy to build uh, for them. Um, and then you can see I'm the physician here. There is an inbox of messages and tasks. So acute health, just like a lot of other kind of startup themed places, they're very task based. So for example, I may have to, <clears throat> um, So I might pick a patient. I don't have an active patient yet. We'll add that in just a second. So I can't save this one. Um, well, I guess I could, <laughs> but uh, obviously I don't have a patient to assign it to. Uh, and then there's documents that you can upload, whether documents that you're going to share with patients, etc. And then this is my non-existing patient list, and we're going to create a patient. Just let's create one right off the bat. So this is going to be Mike. Last name test. Uh, I'm the physician. And I'm going to list them, their status as active versus passive. Um, I didn't talk about this quite enough, but uh, the pricing structure for acute health is that you get a minimum of $50 a month, uh, which allows you uh, e-prescribing and un unlimited usage. But you, for each active patient, they're going to charge you an extra 50 cents per month. So obviously, you, you don't care about that, right? Like, so, like I said, up to about $300 just don't think about it, like pay the money willingly as long as the software provider is engaging, it, it communicates with you. You can get patient self-scheduling, telemedicine, so kind of like the communication platform. Um, they're, they're working on a patient platform, which I think it's really nice to have a patient portal. I mean, patient platform, patient portal, because you want a place where the patient can see everything without having to contact you. Um, uh, I don't know what hint is a fully enc encrypted HIPAA compliant email customer support 
at one particular location. I think that's your practice address and unlimited usage. And then for for about $200 a month, you get all of the startup features in this growth plan, but you also get lab ordering, you get the ability to fax and I believe receive faxes, uh, data analytics, um, which I could see being uh, useful for especially somebody who sees a lot of different types of patients, so maybe for a higher volume telemedicine practice, and then uh, email integration and PDF text search, inventory management, and phone customer support. So probably not as much for me um, here, but for some of you guys, API access might be really nice because you may want to build this into your own existing platform. And for that, you're going to need their help in, to integrate their API. Uh, but obviously, you get a lot more things over here. You get a dedicated account manager, multiple state licenses. Um, yeah, so 24-7 24, 24 access. So pretty straightforward. You can read a little bit more here on the frequently asked questions. So if I create this patient, I should be able to just put in, let's see, Mike. Okay, if I'm, let's see. Let's just give him a random number. All right, let's save it. Let's see if it'll let me save it. I may ask for an address or something. Okay, good. So yeah, here's, uh, here's my first patient. So if I go up here to the patient list, you can see Mike test. And then later I can go to Mike and then over here, for example, in labs, I could add a particular lab that I think uh, I, want, uh, I want the person to have. So for example, maybe he shared with me that their hemoglobin A1C was, uh, that's a lot. Okay, whatever. Let's just go with that uh, 5.7 and I can say whatever the date was and save. And then I can go to demographics. Uh, again, for those of you who want to import a ton of patients but don't want them to all to be active, maybe your old charts, you can go to inactive and you can save it because obviously they're charging you 50 cents for each per month, so it's not a lot, per active patient. Um, if you go to your patient list, you can actually import. Um, I, no, I don't know if you can import actually. I think you can, I don't know. But anyway, you can download your own uh, CSV into like a um, spreadsheet file um, that you can then um, upload, I, I believe you could. But anyway, I got rid of my uh, patients. So if I uh, get rid of this, you can see all of my non-active and active patients that I've created over time. So how does it look like if you want to um, actually, um, let's say if the patient wants to book for you, book an appointment with you, right? So you're gonna give them, uh, let's see, where is it? Nomadhealth.acute, is this it? Yeah, I think so. Oh, here, this one, okay. All right, so digitalnomadhealth.acutehealth.com forward slash appointment. So that's mine, for example, so if a patient let's say their name is going to be testing testing and their date of birth is always the same now i need to first allow for patients to just register without my permission because i'm oftentimes the way it works is you maybe get the appointment over the phone then you enter the patient into the system and then the patient can make follow-up appointments but here are you a new patient and have not signed in yes and then they're going to give me their phone number. Uh, yep. Okay. Great. So this is basically my patient over here, right? And they can maybe, I've already created appointment types, which we'll kind of go over, but let's say they want to book an urgent care with me. It's going to be a one hour appointment. Uh, they're gonna book it maybe tomorrow. So here's the date that I select. And then uh, the time slots that I still have available if they're not booked. You can see they can book, let's say 7 a.m. Uh, please describe what is going on briefly and what you'd like to get out of the visit. Diarrhea, um, any biotics. Okay, easy, right? And I added that question myself and I created the appointment types myself. So that's something you got to do and that's something we're going to do. So then I can go to add calendar to Google Calendar, which is really cool, right? That kind of integration. So the, the patient can then add it to their own calendar. Um, 
and you can see over here they're going to get a link where they can sign in for the appointment um, so for example if they click on this link you can see here what's up pretty cool right so that was pretty straightforward and going back so let's see okay so we got the we got the patients we got the dashboard tasks problem list medications so all of these are things that you can add or the patient can um, uh, can add themselves once the patient once the patient portal is live um, so I think yeah I don't know if the patient is going to be able to add it that, yeah without a patient portal I don't think they're going to be able to add it unless it's something you can ask in the intake questionnaire you can certainly do that um, that might be that might save you a lot of his uh, effort and time but labs and vitals and uh, health maintenance stuff goals I, I thought this was pretty cool to add uh, goal stuff for patients um, so now I have the inbox um, so I can add uh, I can create a task so let's let's go over setting up your account really I think that's the piece that uh, everybody's a little bit anxious about um, so essentially you saw how a patient would be scheduled right you would go to your the name of your clinic so digital nomad telemedicine or digital nomad health dot acute health dot com forward slash appointments um, and so here this is my office phone number I don't have a fax I don't think it's supported at my plan and then here is uh, my email address for my telemedicine practice I don't know what that means verifying email email sent to patients CHR okay and then there's another email that I think they're giving me it, it, it seems like and then here you need to allow patients to self-schedule this is my practice location the actual physical address where I have in uh, what I have in Los Angeles and then um, disable appointment status colors whatever enable panel only view that's not relevant and then um, for me it's important for me to uh, integrate into um, Google Calendar and because it's my own per private calendar I'm not worried about PHI um, allow zoom integration set zoom as default so this is something they added recently if you want to do your telemedicine visits with zoom so remember that video that I opened up wasn't zoom but if you prefer to do that you can I don't really have any particular concern about it so I don't care and then here you can add new user permissions. so if you have a medical assistant so for example for me I have a virtual assistant that I use sometimes for certain things I don't know if I want to add them to this but that's something that I could always do in the future so my profile is basically my full name doctor MD uh, and then I'm a clinician I'm the owner and then my uh, phone number which is going to be yeah my phone number my uh, my date of birth my NPI number and then signature basic stuff right uh, all, all the stuff you're going to need to be able to set up your uh, your account um, and then my availabilities and times based on my time location um, the nice thing is you can add multiple so I could add an extra one here uh, so I can add like from 5 a.m. to 10 uh, 10 a.m. and then maybe from you know 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Um, and then the appointment types is what you're going to create so for example um, I can create an appointment type where it is mm, maybe a 15 minute follow-up so 15 minute follow-up and then I say follow-up appointment um, video, is it a video visit or no so maybe if it's just a phone call for for follow-up and then the patient can schedule it it's a 15 minute duration they can schedule it every 30 minutes that way I have some time between patients and then they can schedule it um, 120 minutes out that's the earliest they can schedule it and up to uh, 60 days in advance we'll say 30 days in advance allow register patients to self-schedule uh, and then allow unregistered patients to self-schedule so for this one I probably wouldn't want to allow unregistered patients to do it so this is something where my patient who's already established with me they can go in there and they can schedule it so that's kind of cool and then I can certainly send them an email I can send them a self-scheduling link I can send uh, information for another website I can, so a lot of a lot of stuff that you can add here because they have um, uh, the ability you have the ability to include li links in here and then you can add um, what's the follow-up about I can say that it is required yeah and then that's how I would save it obviously I don't care to create this one so I'm gonna delete it cancel delete confirm okay all right that didn't work 
Um, so these are the two appointment types that I already have. Um, and then templates and macros. Uh, macros, many of you guys are already familiar with it. And then templates are basically if I want a soap note template or um, you know, like a diarrhea template or a UTI template or anything that I want to create. Uh, forms. I haven't played played around with the forms yet, but they have uh, basic ones already for feeling down, depressed, hopeless. The PH PHQ two, the GAD two. I don't think I don't see the PHQ nine over here, but here's the I think patient, general patient intake form. Uh, billing. This is just my credit card information. User groups, um, if you want to add different types of user groups in, into your plan, I can't think of the, needing that. I think specialists might <laughs> might benefit from that. And then reporting, right? So if I do go, if, if I bump up a plan, I can get uh, special reporting on on the on the patients, uh, like their demographics, their age, uh, how much, how often they make appointments, etc. I haven't fully integrated Zoom yet. Uh, I think I will, but um, yeah, I don't see a big big need for it but yeah this is pretty straightforward uh, you guys saw how the rest of it interacted the things I haven't yet figured out for example is how would I communicate with my patient is there like for example I don't see any kind of way that I can communicate with the patient on here and I think that would be something that I that I think would be nice to have there are obviously um, platforms already that exist where you can text message a patient and do that um, I can obviously call the patient myself that's pretty straightforward but being able to have a place where you can text chat with a patient would be helpful. I don't see that in here. It might exist. Um, we can certainly go to the help section, which I close now. But if I go to help, I can search and see if something like that is available. But obviously, it's not here. So if I go to patient list, so this person looks like I can call them and I can email them. Yeah, that's the on the bottom left at the very bottom of the screen. You can see it's just an email, uh, a way to email them. S start a referral, right? And then I can print their information, sticky notes, appointments, medication notes, problem list. But yeah, I don't see a way to contact them. Here's some information about insurance. We'll say they are uninsured, demographics, right? Uh, their family history. Great, so I can add a condition. The goals, which I again I like, I like a lot. And then allergies, uh, problem lists, tasks, new owner today, add a task. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like there's a way for me to be able to communicate with the patient directly. Uh, and the dashboard is pretty nice just to get a quick overall view of the patient, kind of a glimpse of what it is that you're doing. Um, and here in the patient list, there's not a lot that you can do. You pretty much can just click on the patient. So that's it. That's the overview, guys. This is Acute Health. I uh, would love to hear what you guys think. And maybe let me know what your favorite platforms are. Take care.